Well, let's start with this uh, announcement yesterday that Martin St. Louis numbers uh, going to be retired. Number or sweater? Number or sweater? Uh, Where do you guys number, go? Yeah. Jersey number. Yeah. I always go number. Yeah. I, I, uh, people you go always, sweater. I go sweater for some reason, and it's Old not school. a sweater. Old school. It's, it's not. Um, are you surprised at all? Because the prevailing opinion is that there's uh, still some some feelings that uh, that need to be mended uh, regarding what happened between Martin St. Louis and the Lightning, and in particular, Steve Eiserman. I, I'm not surprised at all, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, before the way things ended the way they did, I thought they were going to build statues for Marty St. Louis around that building. So the fact that he's going to be the first to have his jersey retired by the franchise doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, knowing the way that uh, the owner, Jeff Vinnick, handles his business and, and the way he treats people and he treats his employees. And, you know, they're, they're all about class and doing the right thing. And to me, this is absolutely the right thing to do. Marty was always going to be the first guy to have this happen to him in franchise history. And the fact that it ended so badly, yes, I'm sure there's still some feelings there. In fact, I know there's some feelings there. I, I've seen it from some Lightning fans over the last couple of, uh, you know, 24 hours or so since this uh, announcement was made. But to me, it's the right thing to do. It's the perfect way to mend the bridges. And I'm, and I'm sure when that ceremony takes place on January 13th, I, I won't say all will be forgiven, but it will kind of be smoothed over a lot more than maybe it would have been because it's going to be a night to remember and celebrate everything that Marty St. Louis did for that franchise. So we're just reading into the fact that Eisman wasn't there yesterday and St. Louis didn't mention Eisman's name when he was on the conference call. Awkward. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it with some hard feelings. And, and that wasn't lost on anybody. It was Jeff Vinnick that made the announcement about Steve Eisenman. So that, you know, that kind of tells you that there's some frostiness maybe at that level. But in terms of the organization and the fans and everybody else, I think this was the right thing to do. Now, Eric, help us a bit with the chronology of what went south if we're not in, in Tampa. Because Brian Lawton used to do some stuff here, and he said that, you know, Marty St. Louis, we had made talks about being traded when he was general manager. I mean, it went back a while. So I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm curious about, like, the genesis of it and why it got real personal with Steve Eiserman. Uh, it, well, it, there were talks about him moving up to the, the New York area, the Connecticut area where his wife's family is from and, and being up there uh, closer to that area. So that had taken place before, especially when the team was going through some tough times. Then all of a sudden, Steven Stamkos came along and, you know, they found some magic together and they, they look like they're going to be a playoff team again. So he kind of put those thoughts and ideas on hold. But then the whole Olympics thing came up, and, you know, when your general manager is the general manager of Hockey Canada, you know, to put that team together and you're not on it, you know, just knowing Marty and how proud of, a, of an athlete he is, I, he felt that he was going to be on that team, and I think it hurt when it wasn't, and I think that was the final straw in kind of, you know, tipping him in the direction that he went. And, and certainly the way it happened and, and, you know, demanding, basically demanding his way out at that time, I think left a lot of raw feelings on, on both sides uh, of, of the equation. To me, that's where – that was just that was the tipping point. That was the part where Marty said, all right, you know what, it's time for me to make this decision uh, for myself and my family. Okay, so uh, so your answer – so really, that was it. I, I was asking the obvious then. I was just curious if there was something – because I said Brian Lott mentioned years earlier. So it was as simple as we projected, not being on the Olympic team, cut and dried. Uh, I, 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 I'm pretty sure, you know, Marty's never come out and said that publicly, but, you know, when you, you hear people talk about it and go behind the scenes a little bit, it, it wasn't the reason, but it was the final reason. Eric, why not Vinny LeCavalier? I'm looking at it from an outsider's point of view. You're a lot closer to it than I am. I would have assumed that it would be number four first uh, before it was Martin St. Louis. Why Marty over Vinny? I, I just think because if you look back on the history of this franchise when the team started to get really good around 2003, Marty was at the center of it all. He was at the, you know, the biggest moments of franchise history. You know, he scores the triple overtime goal against Washington in 2003 for the first playoff victory, series victory in franchise history. You know, he scores a playoff a series clinching victory overtime goal against the Islanders in 2004. He has that memorable goal in Game Six against Calgary, the Stanley Cup Final. To me, he was—he's always just kind of been that heart and soul type of player, and I think the fans identified with him maybe a little bit more than Vinny, just because he was that underdog story, the undersized guy who was kind of cast away a couple of times in his career, and he turned himself into an MVP. I think that's the reason, um, you know, that Marty goes first here. And that's not a slight on Vinny in any way. I think Vinny's number will eventually go up to the Raptors as well. But I always felt in my heart that Marty was going to be the first guy to do it.